The Wizenard series, created by Kobe Bryant, written by Wesley King. Training camp. The Wizenard series, training camp. Rain, twig, Cash Peno Lab, created by Kobe Bryant, written by Wesley King. To my Wiznards, Bill Russell, Tex Winter, Phil Jackson, and Greg Downer, who dedicated their time to teaching athletes that magic comes from within. Learning it just takes a little imagination. Kobe Bryant. I, the reader, hereby agree to learn from Professor Rollaby Wisnard the nature of all things. This contract is bound by the laws that govern the kingdom of granity. Sign here. Book one, Rain. The Professor. Everyone has a choice every moment of the day. Look or look away. Wisnard proverb, sorry, Wisnard proverb 12. Rain pulled open the doors and found darkness. He blinked until, vo until it became gray, then pale, then fluorescent. Shapes emerged like wraiths, voices as faint whispers. Rain grinned. It was good to be back. Then Fairwood's community center's sticky hot air fell over him thick wet dust and the competing smells of mildew and dry rot. Rain sighed, his grin melting away with the first sheen of sweat. Fairwood was old. 75 years of sweat had seeped into the hardwood and the yellowing walls and even the rafters that stretched overhead in creaking ape beam formations. No windows, no fans. The gym boiled in its own brine. His eyes fell on the single line of fraying multicolored banners nailed into the concrete. Rain could recite the details of every one of them, the year, the team, and the title. When Rain was younger, his dad used to come to all of his practices and games, and afterwards, they stared at the banners together and whispered and dreamed of adding more. So as dilapidated as Fairwood Community Center was, the place was in Rain's bones. He knew every inch of the rundown gym, the stains and the smells and the forgotten glory. Not for long, he whispered, then headed for the bench to join the others. The Rainmaker, Big John called out, cupping his mouth like a loudspeaker. Rain laughed and exchanged props with the backup center. So, did Big John get any bigger? Rain asked, sizing him up. All up here, Big John said, patting his biceps. I've been hitting the gym. And the kitchen, Rain said. Big John rubbed his belly. You know my mama makes the best biscuits. We don't, Jerome said. You always eat them before we can try any. Oh yeah, Big John replied thoughtfully. And what about you, Peño? Rain said. Grow any bigger yet? Rain, you know I'm biggest up here, the Badger's squat starting point guard said, tapping his head, making up for Big John and his little peanut brain. Rain laughed and shook his head. If the team spent as much energy practicing as they did dissing one another, maybe they would win a few more games. But that was their problem. Rain was doing everything he could. He sat down on the end of the bench, and Peno grabbed his warped ball and stepped out onto the court, sending the first rhythmic dribbling through the gym. In creaky fairwood, the sound resonated. Rain felt it in the floors, in the bench. He could hear it echo in the rafters like the sounds of distant explosions. Basketball gave fairwood its heartbeat. You got a rhyme for the season yet? Jerome said. Peno glanced back, grinning. You ain't ready for it. No, we aren't, confirmed Lab, Peno's little brother. He was not a fan. Beats, please, Peno said, throwing the ball to Jerome and taking a bow. Lab rubbed his forehead. Please, 
No. Big John jumped up, threatening to topple the bench on the way and started beatboxing. Stop, Lab said. Drome started dribbling, adding a drum layer. I should have stayed in bed, Lab moaned. Peño swung his arm back and forth and started rhyming. The Badgers are back, and yes, our gym is whack, but the boys are better, down to the letter. We come in for the win, uppercut to the chin. Dren best watch for the Badgers because we are, well, he paused. Madgers? Everyone broke out laughing. Peño had been trying to find a rhyme for Badgers for two years now. He had petitioned to change the name to Bears, Bobcats, or even Bats. But the team's owner, Freddy, was attached to the mythical creature for some reason. Most animals were mythical in the bottom. Dren's poorest region didn't have many besides some wandering dogs and feral cats. Rain turned to Twig, who was on the, the away bench, ignoring everyone. His long brown legs jutted in front of him like sickly branches, an image that wasn't helped at all by the spindly fingers draped over his knees. Rain guessed he wasn't losing his nickname anytime soon. Twig, Rain said. Twig gave him a quick wave. Hey, Rain, yo, you look the same. Twig nervously scratched his arm. He seemed to be deciding if he should speak. I gained three pounds, he mumbled. Big John broke out laughing. Three pounds? What, in acne? Oh, Jerome said, snickering. That's cold, homie. Twig looked down and fiddled with his hands. Boy says he put on three pounds, Big John continued. This man kills me. I, I did, Twig said, sounding a bit defensive. Rain could see Twig's discomfort, but he knew he wouldn't do Twig any good if he jumped in to help. Twig had to learn to stick up for himself, or he was going to he was never going to cut in in the tough world of the elite basketball uh, the elite youth league, especially in the bottom. No one survived here without a backbone. Three pounds, Big John said. I put on three pounds this morning. You need thirty to play down low. I need, I'm not even sure why you're back. How much your dad pay Freddie to keep you on the team, huh? The rich boy out the burbs. We know how you got on the team. Yo, you ruthless, Jerome said, grinning. This boy wake up just to get burned. Twig looked away, his glassy eyes catching the light. Rain wondered if he would cry. A poor decision in front of his team. They were all 12 years now, apart from Lab, who was a year younger. And in the bottom, that usually meant you had been through a lot. He felt bad for him. But T Twig did need to toughen up. And so far, he didn't seem to belong on the Badgers. He was so soft. On cue, the first tears started to spill. You gonna cry now, Big John mocked. Twig hurried to the bathroom, and Big John and Jerome cackled with laughter. Rain shifted, uncomfortable, maybe even guilty. But he pushed it aside. None of this was his job. Real nice, Reggie said quietly on day one. Big John waved him away. Boy, should toughen up or he shouldn't be here. Reggie shook his head and went to warm up. On the way, he glanced at Rain as if to say, you the leader on this team? Rain scowled. He opened his duffel bag and pulled out his shoes. His mama had packed a big lunch in there as always. Two water bottles, a can of tuna, and a container full of brown rice, chicken, and green beans. It was always the same meal, and it represented a lot of suffering. His mom worked longer hours to afford it, drove to the nicer North District to find it, spent more hours to make it, and ate less to make sure he was full. All of this was because Freddie had told his mama that Ray needed to eat right if he was going to make it big. She had taken that advice to heart and cooked only healthy food, even when his long-suffering brother, Larry, begged for something else. Rain tightened his shoelaces, 
grabbed his ball and started to warm up, draining one shot after another with practice ease. He couldn't help but smile. Though he lived a few blocks away, Rain's home was here. Out there, he was just another bottom beggar. On the court, he was a baller and a star, and the whole world was just two orange rims. No bills, no guilt, no memory. He ignored the others as they filed in. He focused on only, he focused only on the ball and the rim. Nothing else mattered. Nothing else mattered here. Jab, step, shoot. Drop back, shoot. Fade, shoot. Spin, shoot. Spin, shoot.